there and welcome to this episode of Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. I'm Alan Waddell and as you can see this is not coach Jay Ladner, this is coach Harold no. Goff as uh, coach Ladner is under the weather this week so we want to uh, wish him a, a speedy recovery but coach Goff's going to fill in here for us. As coach thanks for uh, filling in and being a part of our program this week and uh, this was an interesting week for your club. Two long road trips again uh, started with a long flight out to Washington State to take on a very good program in the Gonzaga Bulldogs. No, that was without a doubt a, a great experience for us as we're learning here at Southeastern uh, to go play one of the top programs and this year one of the top teams in the country because Gonzaga is really good. They're highly skilled and, and they have a lot of big young men. But I want to count on what you said. We wish Coach Ladner well and hopefully a speedy recovery as he you know, gets better. We also want to wish him a happy birthday as Monday was Coach Ladner's birthday. But Coach, before we get to the highlights, one thing that we've noticed here in the, the early part of the season is your team is learning to battle against teams with a lot of size. Uh, played some very big teams here early on. We, we have, and everything's a learning experience, but our young men was most important of continuing to improve. Now what we have to do is learn to do the, uh, the, the smaller things. We can't skip over those things. As you know, once we get that down, then we'll learn to win these games. We're, we're playing a really good half. As we all know, you got to play two good halves. And that's what we're going to have to do to, to learn to secure more victories as we move forward. But our young men are getting better and better each day, and that's one of our primary goals. So we're proud of w the direction we're going, but we still have a ways to go. All right, well, let's go out to the arena and check out the first half highlights as the Lions battled Gonzaga. All right, Coach, uh, big test for your program on the road at number nine, Gonzaga. And I know that just from talking to different people that were there, this was an outstanding atmosphere for college basketball. Alan, it was. It was by far one of the most impressive things uh, I've seen as far as college basketball, and it was by far the, the best atmosphere our young men have played in this season. Not only best atmosphere, best team. No doubt, as uh, Gonzaga, a, many people think could be a Final Four team this year. They're, they're loaded with size, but I, I, one thing we're going to, when we jump into the highlights here, uh, your team was not intimidated, came out and played very well in the first half of this ball game. You know, I think our young men did a great job that that particular contest, uh, being aggressive on both ends of the floor, but being smart. You know, we want to play up tempo, but in preparation for this game, we said we're going to push it, but if we don't get something real quick that we want, and Coach was specific in what that was, then we're going to pull it out, run clock, and make them guard us and get into some other things. And our young men executed offensively perfectly and defensively they were active trying to neutralize the size but eventually those things caught up with us in the second half. Yeah and if you look at the highlights here uh, what you're talking about is there was a lot of situations where you got to under 10 seconds on the shot clock and, and were able to knock down shots. Uh, did a good job. Uh, these guys are just so big inside. They had so much size. They were you know Devontae uh, who's our biggest player does an outstanding job and he stands about 6'8", 6'9", 220 and they're out there with Two guys 6'10", both over 260, and one guy 7'1", 290. So they, they really overwhelmed us with their, their size and their strength on the interior. But all of their guys, the littles and, and their big guys, are, are highly skilled. And that's what makes them such a difficult team to guard. And they're well coached. I mean, Coach Few does a great job. That was a great job of Isaiah Jackson attacking the basket early in the shot clock that time. And you can see from the score at the bottom of the screen, uh, team played very well in this first half. They, they did. We play, I mean, I really, we didn't play poorly the second half, uh, not as well as the first half. They made some adjustments that we weren't able to counter as quickly or as well as we'd like. I won't say as quickly. We knew what they were doing. We just couldn't counter it uh, as well as we would have liked. But our young men did an outstanding job carrying out the game plan that night. It just, once adjustments had to go on, we didn't have the capacity to adjust and neutralize what they adjusted to doing. Coach, we see a lot of highlights by Zay Jackson. I know you're very familiar with him, coaching him in high school, and uh, Zay's been a, a, certainly a spark to the program this year. He has, but a lot of our young men have. We, we're glad to have Zay. He's done a great job for us. Uh, you know, he's going to have to continue to play at a high level, along with our other young men, for us to be ultimately successful when it's most important, and that's when we get the conference play. Nice shot that time, kind of falling away. Just seemed like everything was going in in that first half. Uh, some shots there late in the shot clock, and we're able to get some shots to go. Great turnaround right there. You know, we, we did. We shot the ball, and we came off of two games where we had shot the ball fairly well. You know, the second half versus Tennessee Tech here, and that prompted us to have a good run against Tulane and then Langston. Then we take off and go to Gonzaga. And once again, that first half, boy, the ball is, the ball is going through the hoop. Our young men are making good passes and good plays. And, and they were feeding off of each other's success. The whole team was. 
And then, like I said, you know, the second half, they made some adjustments to counter, like you said, us trying to get to the last 10, 12 seconds of shot clock. They did some denial things where it didn't. We were pushed against the clock in the last five or six seconds and made it difficult on us. Coach, I thought one thing that, uh, that jumped out, too, is you had a seven, eight-point lead in the first half. They take the lead at this point, and you close the first half very well. Uh, and really highlighted by this, uh, you know, this could be a Sports Center top 10 play right there. You know, that was just a great play. They tried to run a denial. Josh runs back, gets the ball, attacks the middle, which is always good against pressure, and throws it up. Devontae, like I say, 6'8", 6'9", but he is an exceptional athlete. You see that as he gets off the floor. Great pass by Josh Fillmore, who the past week and a half, has just been playing exceptional basketball on the offensive end. I mean, between, not just shooting, but playmaking, as you witnessed there. You go on a little 6-0 run right there. They uh, they tighten it back up, but you're able to take the lead into the, 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 the locker room against Gonzaga. Uh, very nice performance by the Lions in the first half. Uh, I know on social media it was blowing up, you know, upset alert and all this certain things. Uh, but you know they'd come out and play well in the second half. They're a championship caliber program. They definitely are. And we knew, you know, as we met back here outside the locker room as a coaching staff, we knew they would make some changes. And we were trying to right then talk about what things we wanted to continue to do and what changes we needed to make to get in preparation for what they would do and what Coach Few had his team do. Uh, we, what we needed was some more bodies. And, you know, that was ultimately it. They decided to just... I mean, they hit this three, and from then on, everything was basically played inside that semicircle in the paint with their size. Their guys, here they go. They just start pounding us inside. You know, and that's a guy 6'10", 255, going against our guys 6'7", 215. Coach, we just heard you talk about it. This is the type of program that Southeastern can hopefully emulate one day and become that type of program because this is a, a smaller program as well, but your team went on the road and battled very hard, actually led at halftime in this game. That, that's true. It was a great first half by our young men. Ultimately, we didn't secure the victory like we all would have liked, but we made a good showing and we learned a lot about our team and about the direction we want to take this men's program here at Southeastern because this, the University Center has a lot of the resources we need to one day have that same type of environment we experienced when we went to Gonzaga. I don't think there's any doubt about it, so let's go ahead and take a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot more right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Line fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of line basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit linesports.net or call 549 line. Always remember, line up. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner as we now are joined by coach Kyle Rowan here on the set as uh, if you're just joining us coach Ladner is a little under the weather this week couldn't make this uh, make our program but uh, the coaches uh, coach Golf and coach Rowan are filling in for us and coach we're going to take a look now as your team went on the road and took on uh, Southeast Missouri State before we do it I want to get your thoughts on that game on the road at Gonzaga. Uh, you know, Gonzaga, number one, it was a great experience for our guys, great college environment, you know, play against a nationally ranked team and, and a program with a lot of tradition. It was great for us. I thought our guys did really, really well, Ex you know, take the score out of it, you know, and, and, and taking the growth of our kids, played a great first half. Uh, obviously, you know, they exploited our size a little bit in the second half, so, it, you know, the score didn't indicate, you know, I think of, of our kids' effort. So it was really good for us. You know, what we got to take as, as coaches and parlay into the rest of our season is what we did there and fit it in in some of these future games and in particular our Southland games. All right, well, the Lions were back on the road at Southeast Missouri State in Cape Girano, Missouri. Here's the highlights. 
All right, Coach, on the road at Southeast Missouri State. Uh, this is a program that just seems like every game we're talking about, uh, it just had a lot of size inside once again. Yeah, and you, and you know, we know that about our team. We're probably, that's probably where we're the thinnest uh, as far as our size. So, so that did, you know, the rebounding margin kind of definitely showed on that. Well, Coach, talk, talk about some of these highlights a little bit. Didn't start this game particularly the way you wanted to. No, it seemed like we were a little flat. Alan, you know, just kind of, maybe, maybe, you know, we can't give ourselves excuses, but maybe all the travel and started very flat, as you can see, and got ourselves down, I think, maybe 14 at the half. But, you know, uh, you know, so many things we could have, you know, done a little better early. Well, Coach, these are the first half highlights of this game, and we're going to go more into the second half here coming up. But your team really fought hard and got back in this ballgame and had several chances to win at the end. You know, I think that's a credit to us on the road, and I think that's maybe a little bit of progress with our team learning how to play. You know, I mentioned down 14 early, uh, 14 at the half, and we fought back and gave ourselves a chance even with the mistakes that we made. Made a couple of tough shots there, pretty good defense, but just kind of rose up and made the shot. And uh, we've seen, though, through these first few ball games, the way you guys want to play, you know, pushing the ball up and down the court and playing pressure defense. Well, you know, coach uses the term attack all the time. We want to attack on both ends. Offensively, we want to put pressure on on, uh, on the defense. And obviously, as, as a defensive team, we want to pressure them. So, uh, you know, want to attack all the time. And I, I think that gives us a chance to never be out of a ball game. As you can see from these highlights here in the first half, uh, a couple of empty possessions, and they made some easy buckets in transition. There's a big three. Uh, got your team right back in it. But uh, like we mentioned, you would fall behind in this ball game early. But can't, the kids continue to play hard and, and gave yourselves a chance to win. Yeah, and, and you know, those are the things we're having to measure right now. Maybe not so much wins, loss record, but are we still competing? Are we getting better? And I thought our guys did, you know, even in this game, as we'll see later. We, we, we have the ball, you know, with, with uh, down two uh, later on in this game. So at, at least we didn't have a, a quit attitude. Coach, I, obviously your team's learning how to play on the road. I've played a lot of road games early on in the year, and that's something that should be able to help you later on in the season. Uh, it definitely, we've had to get used to it. I mean, we've uh, we were just glad to see home. Ne ne never as uh, have we been so excited to get to finals week. You know, finals week's always something guys really don't look forward to. But uh, I tell you, I, we're, we're glad to be home this week. You look at uh, you look at the trip that the Lions made on the road all the way to Gonzaga over in Washington State, and then uh, over to Missouri in Cape Girano, Missouri. I know a lot of Southeastern fans will be familiar with that trip because uh, football played these guys this year as well. Uh, but uh, and just the first half, I mean, what more can we say? You know, they just uh, probably, probably outplayed us a little bit in the first half, but really probably outplayed them in the second half. I think it was a tell of two halves. And, uh, you know, obviously rebounding margin, you know, we give up 20 offensive rebound. That's probably the biggest, uh, biggest stat is getting us, you know, down so big in the first half, and, and we overcome it a little bit. But, you know, it's almost like giving them to match our offensive rebounds. We basically gave them 15 free possessions, and that's tough to overcome anywhere. So just right off the bat, you cut it to seven points, uh, you know, with a 5-0 little run there, and and this is the second half, and the highlights where we would see that your team got right back in the ballgame, had a chance to win at the end. We, we did, had, had some players made some plays. I, I think uh, Devontae Upson in particular uh, had gotten foul trouble early in this half, and having him for the full 20 minutes uh, second half uh, helped us. Uh, you know, Zay has been really productive for us uh, as a guard, and, uh, Ochi uh, getting double-figure rebounds in this game. So we, we had some individuals step up and uh, really, really improved our play second half. It's a big three-point shot there, and the three-point shot has been pretty kind to you here this year. Uh, when you've played well, it seems like you're really hitting those threes. Uh, it is, and you know, it's kind of a uh, dual-edged sword because, you know, we've, been very, we've shot them at a very high cons uh, consistent level, high percentage, uh, but also when a few of those don't, get in, don't go in, you know, it seems like our offensive production slacks a little bit. And, uh, but, I, but I think our guys, uh, Daniel Greaves, uh, uh, Devontae Upson, uh, you know, Brett Barkley, Ochi, those guys uh, have picked up their scoring. As you can see, Upson just, you know, knocked down a mid-range jumper. Uh, so one, I think once we get going all on the same page, uh, you know, I think we've got a chance to be a, be a good team as conference play approaches. Well, Coach, this was a game that uh, came up just short at the end, had a shot there at the end of the ball game, didn't go down. But, hey, uh, didn't play that well in the first half, but your team really fought back and got back in the game in the second half. We did. Uh, mentioned tell of two halves. You know, I, I wish we had to put a little better uh, or came out with a little better, uh, I think, focus first half. And I uh, wouldn't, have, wouldn't have been as men a, a much of a deficit we'd had to overcome in the second half. But, you know, through it all, we came out short. We've got to take from it. And, 
uh, learn what we can from this CMO game and uh, apply it to our future. All right, let's take a break. We come back, we'll have more right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball. Head Coach Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Hey, Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladd. Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. Welcome back to Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. Now I'm joined uh, by Anochi Ochi here on the set, a Lion basketball player here. And uh, First of all, we, good, good to have you, man. And hey, before we get to basketball, I want to ask you, I know you got to be thrilled that you're going to walk across this stage uh, this weekend as uh, you will graduate from South Asian. I think you got to be proud of that. Oh, definitely. I'm, I'm really excited. You know, it's been a long journey, a lot of late nights, you know, but I just, I just thank God and I'm just really excited to get my degree and move forward with the season, you know, and finish my senior year strong. Well, I just asked uh, Ochi after, Ochi after uh, I'm all, we're off the air, I said, hey, so what are you, like a pro basketball player now? But no, you're going to go to grad school next I'm, semester. I'm is that correct? grad school, yes, sir. So congratulations on that. Lions getting it done on the court and off the court here at Southeastern. Let's talk about basketball a little bit. Uh, early on here in the season, you've had a chance to, you've been on the road a lot. I know you're looking yeah. forward to getting home, playing some home games. Oh, definitely, man. It's, not, it's nothing like coming home, you know, in front of your friends and family. And, uh, and we played some tough road games like at Gonzaga, at Oklahoma State, at Oklahoma, some great teams. But I'm excited to uh, play some home games. It's nothing like it. All right, well, let's talk about uh, this new coaching staff a little bit. I know that you've been here at Southeastern for a while now. You've yeah, had some so. transition. Uh, talk about, uh, you know, this new coaching staff and what the style's been like. Oh, the style's exciting. You know, Coach Ladner really allows you to play your game, and he really brings the talents out of you. He puts you in situations to be successful. And, you know, I've noticed that for me, so I'm really excited about the rest of the season. I know our win-loss total hasn't been great because of our non-conference schedule so far, but I'm excited to see, like Coach said, our improvement and uh, how much better we get into conference. I don't think there's any doubt about it. When you watch this basketball team this year, just the style of play you guys are playing, it seems to fit here. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I definitely. think that y'all are a dangerous basketball team as we get into a conference play here uh, coming up next month or so. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm, I'm just so excited about our potential because we competed so well with these bigger schools. So as we get into conference play, I'm just excited about, you know, what we can really do this season. Well, OJ, thanks for stopping by and spending some time with us. And just a reminder, December the 19th is the Lions' next home game right here at the University Center. It's now time to take a look at our Lion profile this week, and we're going to catch up with Lion for Life, Mr. Dwayne Donald. In the late 80s and early 90s, Dwayne Donald's world consisted of Southeastern academics and Southeastern basketball. Donald came to Hammond in 1986 and played four seasons for the Lions. And during his time here, he learned about basketball. But more important, he learned about life. I had some great times here, won a couple games with some buzzer beater shots. So it was a great experience for me. I learned a lot about adversity, learned a lot about how to, how to become a man and, and deal with good, the good times as well as the bad times. So Southeastern basketball taught me a lot about the good, the bad, and the ugly, but most of the good. The good Donald speaks of was hitting two game-winning shots. The bad would be playing for three different coaches in four years, and the ugly was when the program was suspended for a year. But through it all, Donald made the most of his opportunity. But we did have a lot of fun, met a lot of great people, the Doc Goodwins of the world, uh, Leo McClure, although he didn't have a great coaching career, the Don Wilsons of the world. So met a lot of great people, great friends, great teammates, and Hank Washington, Mike Wolf, my college roommate, Dennis Roussel, uh, Darrell Ice Jones, who's now a minister. So met great people, people who I still call my friends. And so it was, although some difficult times as, well, as far as the different coaches I, I worked with or, or who coached me, but we had, we had fun times. 
The on-court highlight for Donald has to be the game-winning shot he hit versus what would become future Southland Conference opponent for the Lions. Yeah, that was Stephen F. Austin, actually Ned Fowler, who used to coach at Tulane, was their new coach there. And, and again, it was a good game. One of actually was our first home game back that year that we brought the program back. I had a great crowd, and I was fortunate enough to hit a 35-footer at the buzzer to win. After Double D nailed the 35-footer to sink the Lumberjacks, he did what any young player would do. He jumped upon the scorer's table. Yep, you heard me right, the scorer's table. Well, I didn't really know what to do, so I just, that's the first thing that came to mind. I was very excited for my teammates, excited for myself. And so, you know, was, the table was there, so I just jumped on it. After graduation, Donald came back as a coach, then entered the business world. But in 2001, he came back to Southeastern to work in the academic world. This time, not as Double D, Dwayne Donald, but as Triple D, Dr. Dwayne Donald, Ph.D. So what we do with the help of the Department of Education, the Federal Department of Education, is to actually teach and mold students from, from the middle school all the way up to the baccalaureate degree to help them understand that a college degree is kind of going to help you get to maintain to be a special person in, 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 this, in America that, that we live today. So what we do is we work with those students, we help them to understand that it's important to get that college degree, and so we, we help them from middle school all the way up to getting that degree. Dwayne still attends games at the University Center. He was on the committee to hire Coach Ladner, and Lion basketball is still a very big part of his life. I think it's on the rise. I think uh, Coach Ladner is going to do a great job. He comes with a great pedigree, uh, winning the national championship at the junior college level. He's got a great staff uh, with him as well. I've got a chance to watch them play. They play with a lot of intensity. They play up, up tempo. A style of basketball, I think, that's going to be very conducive to what we want to see here in Hamilton, Louisiana. So I think the program is definitely on the up and up. Uh, you know, they're going through a tough schedule right now because of the type of game that they have to play right now. But I think it's going to prepare them well for the conference schedule. And I look for big things from Coach Ladner and their staff. Well, Coach, here's a unique situation of a former Lion player now uh, works in the administration here at Southeastern, Dr. Dwayne Donald. Uh, always nice to see former Lions go on and have great success. It is. You know, anytime former players, and even though this is our first stint here, first about eight months, we're still in that honeymoon phase. A lot of people tell us we don't believe that. But anytime we get former players, we're proud to have them, and especially one like Dr. Donald, who's now in administration and working here at his alma mater, Southeastern Louisiana University. Coach, i got to get your, your comments on this before I let you go here. Uh, not the type of win-loss success that maybe you're all hoping for at the beginning of the year. Talk about the state of the team and the improvement and where, where you go from here at this point of the year. You know, like I said earlier, our goal is to get better every day. Right. Uh, so we're, we're proud of the progress. We realize we still have a lot of room for improvement, but we are proud in the direction we're moving. Uh, we want to continue to build support. That's why we're glad, you know, right. like Dr. Donald came in and shared some of his experiences with us. We need those former players to do that because all that will bring the community together as we continue to build this program. We want our young men to stay positive. And Coach Ladner speaks on those terms every day because I thought he did a great job when he first got with the guys in the spring when he took the job of telling them what our goal was. He didn't say it was to be 10-0 and 0 or to win so many games. He just told them it's to get better every day. So when we get to conference play, we're ready to make a run. We know we have to secure enough wins to get to Katy, and we want to be at our best when we hit Katy, Texas for that conference tournament. We want to try and make a run at that thing. There's no doubt about it, and I think that uh, the talent is there, and you can see the improvement right here at Southeastern Basketball here this year. All right, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll have more right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball. That goes Jay Ladner. Inside Southeastern Basketball with Jay Ladner is made possible by Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana. For over 30 years, Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana has been a premier landscape architect design company. Angelo specializes in both commercial and residential work. Angelo's offers their clients a buildable and realistic solution with a focus on design, construction, and proper maintenance techniques. Owner Angelo DiStefano, Southeastern Class of 1972, invites you to visit Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana at 13750 Jefferson Highway in Baton Rouge or visit their website at angeloslawnscape.com. Angelo's Lawnscape of Louisiana, a proud supporter of Southeastern and Southeastern basketball. Hey, Lion fans, I'm Southeastern head basketball coach Jay Ladner. 
Join us as we usher in a new era of Lion basketball. For more information on season tickets, visit lionsports.net or call 549-LINE. Always remember, line up. All right, welcome back to our final segment here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with head coach Jay Ladner. We're rejoined by Coach Kyle Rona as Coach Ladner is out this week as he uh, is a little bit under the weather, and we wish him the best of luck as he uh, continues to uh, get better and get back on his feet here as the Lions are in their finals week. And I'll talk to you, Coach, a couple of things. First of all, we just talked to Anochi Ochi. I know you got to be very proud. He's graduating this weekend. That's a special thing for a college athlete. And these kids, uh, it's finals week. they, they got to be students this week. Oh, it's, it's totally changed, and in particular, with our schedule, you know, getting back, not only, they don't really have a chance to rest, especially mentally because they're preparing for finals and our schedule has put us on the road a good bit. So we've got a lot of catching up to do, but really proud of Ochi. He's a young man that just, you know, is loaded with character and he's, he's the, you know, the picture of a student athlete, I think. So we're really proud of him uh, getting his degree and entering grad school. That's, that's a huge step for him and his family and our program. All right, Coach, let's talk about the scouting report coming up as uh, you know, after finals week, you're going to go on the road and take on UTEP, uh, the Miners, and then you'll be back home on the 19th and take on Winthrop. I know you got to be glad uh, to get a home game in there, but, but another long trip over to El Paso. No question. And you know, UTEP's a team in Conference USA, uh, finished one game out of first place uh, last year in, in the league, uh, went to postseason play last year, uh, play, play against a very grounded, uh, solid head coach and Coach Floyd, who's, who's uh, very well traveled and very successful. So they'll be very well coached. They're long, which, which matches up you know, tough against us. You know, they're a very long team. So, you know, UTEP will be a test, but it'll be, you know, a great way to get back into basketball after finals. And then, Coach, talk about Winthrop as you take on those guys on the 19th. Uh, Winthrop will be kind of, uh, kind of a flip from UTEP. They're more guard-oriented, uh, uh, went into Clemson and beat Clemson at Clemson and ACC power. So, uh, you know, they're, they're going to be a tough test for us uh, coming into our place. And, and, and the last time we were here, we had a really, really good second half against Tennessee Tech. So, you know, we want to kind of bring that same energy back at home. No doubt about it. Lions are 1-0 at home here on the season. So, we've got to make it 2-0 on the 19th as they take on Winthrop. Well, that's going to do it for us. We want to thank Coach Kyle Rohn, Coach Errol Goff, and Ochi Ochi for all filling in this week as Coach Ladner was out. Right here on Inside Southeastern Basketball with Head Coach Jay Ladner. We'll see you next week. We a nice little oh, flip up to the rim and ups and knows what to do with it. Big time finish, boys. Well, Shemley got caught in no man's land there.